Welcome back. Again, I'm not spooky. I keep trying. Thank you for putting up with me. <laughs> if you're new to the channel, please hit subscribe. And if you don't know what's going on here, every Friday we have spooky videos where I do a more Halloween-y look. And while I'm doing that, I do a voiceover telling you a scary story from my brain. It's a good time for all. Unless you don't like scary things and then maybe don't watch the Friday videos. They'll end after Halloween. But until Halloween, Friday is spooky day. Alright, we're going to get into this. Um, I'm going to try and do a pumpkin, like a jack-o'-lantern look. And I can't decide if I want to do like a spooky jack-o'-lantern or like a glam jack-o'-lantern. Like a weird combination of both. I can't decide. So we're just going to wing it like everything else in my life. <laughs> All right, enough of me babbling. Let's get spooky. I think in our adult lives, we've all had or heard of a landlord that just could have actually have been renting to Satan, just landlord from hell. Am I right? Marsha had recently divorced and it was a very ugly divorce, a very ugly custody battle over she and her husband's only son, Shane. After the divorce, she decided she wanted to leave town, just get as far away as possible. So they moved several states over, hoping that he wouldn't follow them or try and contact them because she wanted nothing to do with him. She'd cut him out of her life. She wasn't going back. Shane was about six, six and a half if you asked him. Very curious, but you know. He was a good kid. So they moved and she was trying to find a decent place to live, but obviously one income household, she needed to find something rather cheap and it wasn't easy finding something available immediately, but she finally managed to find one and the landlord seemed really nice, but there was just something about him that made her a little uneasy. Something in his eyes. He would smile, but it was like his eyes didn't smile with the rest of his face. And she just found it really unnerving, but that was the only thing. Like, he seemed really nice. He seemed to genuinely want to help her get moved into that apartment. The only stipulation he had, though, was no pets and there is an outdoor entrance to a cellar that they were to never enter. He had a special lock on it and he would know if they went in. She thought that was a little odd, but he said he used it for storage and he just didn't want Shane to go down there because it's really dark and he might fall down the stairs and hurt himself. And that made sense to her. So she's like, okay, yeah. So they move in and, you know, there was nothing notable happening, found a job, and uh, Shane made friends with some of the neighbor kids. Everything seemed to be going great. But every once in a while they would smell really weird smell, and it seemed to be coming from the cellar. One month when she was paying her rent, she mentioned it. She's like, you know, sometimes there's like weird smells coming out of your cellar. I don't know if maybe something might have gotten mildewed down there and it's like rotting, but like there's some funky smells coming out of there, man. And he kind of, you know, laughed it off and said, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll look into it. But that's as far as it went. One night, Shane woke her up almost crying and she was like what is it and he said I heard a lady screaming and it sounded like it came from the cellar she went to his room because the cellar entrance was like right outside of his bedroom window and she didn't hear anything and she was like I, you must have just been dreaming and he's like no I heard a woman she was screaming and crying 
Well, she was a little unnerved, but she, you know, went outside and looked, and the cellar was still locked like it always is. So she went back inside and was like, listen, the cellar door's locked. Like, no one's been in it. You're, you're just dreaming. So she put him back to bed, and he fell back asleep, and, you know, they never really thought anything of it again. But about a week later, they started smelling the weird smell from the cellar again. So she called the landlord and said, hey, listen, that weird smell from the cellar is back. I don't know what you have down there, but, like, it keeps stinking. And he just kind of laughed it off and was like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll check it over again. Last time it was just uh, some old carpeting had gotten mildewed and was rotting. That's, that's all that is. And so she hung up the phone and was like, I don't really remember rotting fabric smelling like this, but, you know, I don't want to pry into his business. He was a pretty chill landlord, you know, kept to himself, so she didn't really want to rock the boat. But the smell just kept coming back, and any time she would ask him about it, he would just sort of, you know, laugh it off or make some kind of lame excuse for what the smell could be, but she just kept getting this unsettling feeling like there was something else going on that she didn't know about. Well, one day, Shane was outside playing with the neighbor boys, and they were playing out in the backyard by the cellar door. And they asked him if he'd ever went down to the cellar, and he said, no, we can't. The landlord keeps it locked. It's his, like, private storage. And one of the kids was like, I bet I could unlock it. He'd been playing a lot of video games and thought he knew how to pick locks, because, you know, video games. So he got some, like, sticks and a paper clip <laughs> and was trying to unlock the lock and he wasn't successful but that night the landlord called and was going off like who's been in my cellar who was messing with my lock i know someone was messing with my lock and of course you know she denied it and she asked shane and he said no i didn't touch the lock and he said the boy was lying. He has to be lying. Someone was messing with my lock. And she looked at him and said, Shane, are you lying to me? Did you mess with the lock? And he said, no, I didn't mess with the lock. One of the neighbor boys did. He was trying to open it with the paper clip. Well, she had to apologize to the landlord. And he said, if anything like that ever happens again, you're out. You're out without a moment's notice. You're out. Well, she thought it was a little weird that he got so worked up over you know, some silly kids trying to paperclip a lock open. But, you know, it's his personal business and she didn't want to get involved again. Well, one day they were playing outside and one of them happened to notice that the lock wasn't fully shut on the cellar door. Well, Shane said, no, no, we shouldn't go down there. The, the landlord threatened to kick us out last time you guys messed with the lock. We can't touch the lock. Just don't mess with it. But, of course, you know, boys. They're like, oh, you're just scared. So, they open the lock. And they open the door. And an awful smell came out. Well, the boys went and got some flashlights. And they decided they were gonna go down there and see what the smell was when they came back with the flashlights though the door was shut and locked and the landlord was standing there waiting for them are you boys messing with my door did you go down in the cellar they said no sir we did not and he said but you opened the door and they said Yes, sir, we did, but we went to get flashlights to see what was down there. But we'll, we'll never do it again, sir. I'm so sorry. Well, that night he called Martha and said, You and your son need to get out of that house. Now. 
she was shocked, but, I mean, he did say if they ever messed with the door again, they were out. And she'd managed to save up a little bit. I mean, she'd been working really hard, but finding a place to crash was going to be really hard. I mean, she'd made some friends, but not friends that she felt comfortable saying, Hey, can me and my son live with you for a little while? So she asked if he could, you know, give them a deadline, you know, like, give me a week and then, you know, maybe we can work something out. I'm so sorry. I, I know you asked us to never mess with that door and, and my son said he didn't do it. It was the neighbor kids, but, you know, I'm so sorry that that happened to you. It's your property. We shouldn't have been messing with it. And he said, okay, okay, one week. But then you, you have to be out. So she asked around to all of her coworkers if she could, you know, stay with them for a while. And one of them said, yeah, let me just, you know, clear out some stuff. Like my son went away to college, so you guys can just crash in his room for a while. But I'll clear out all of his stuff and you can come over. So she went home and they were packing up their belongings. And she heard the door open. Thinking that Shane maybe went outside, she yelled for him, but he didn't answer. She went to go see what was going on, and the landlord was standing there in the doorway. The weird look on his face. And she said, listen, I talked to someone at work. They're going to let me stay at their house. We're actually just packing up our stuff right now. We'll be out. Again, I'm so sorry. And he said, oh, no, no, it's fine. I understand. I understand perfectly. Some people just can't be trusted. And she said, I'm really sorry. I mean, Shane didn't do it. It was the neighbor kids. You know, boys, they're just curious. And, you know, when you say you can't do something, they want to do it. And he said, oh, oh, I understand. Would you like to see what's in the cellar? And she said, no, no, it's fine. I, I really, it's, it's your personal business. I don't need to be involved. And he said, oh, no, I think you should see what's in the cellar. And she said, if you insist, and he said, oh, yes, yes, I insist. I've already shown Shane. I want to show you now, too. So she goes outside with him. And she's looking around and she can't see Shane anywhere. She's like, well, where is Shane? He said, oh, he's still down in the cellar looking around at stuff. You'll see. He's down there. And she said, oh, okay. So they go down in the cellar and he flipped the switch. Like there's a switch at the very bottom of the stairs just in the darkness. But she didn't remember him shutting the cellar door behind her. When he turned the switch on, it was a single room. But it was covered in plastic. And she saw Shane, but he was laying on the ground. And she thought that was really weird. And she said, Shane, what are you doing? But he didn't respond. She went over to him. He wasn't moving. And the landlord said, he shouldn't have ever opened the cellar door. No one ever comes down in the cellar. And if they do, they don't leave. She turned around and he pulled a knife from behind his back. And before she could scream, he had slit her throat the next renters sometimes noticed a weird smell coming from the cellar, but the landlord was really strict about never messing with the lock on the cellar. Okay, that is the look. There's my pumpkin face. I don't know if you guys noticed. I might cut it out. I don't know. Haven't edited it yet, but had a total meltdown on the mouth. Like, I I forgot about teeth. <laughs> I forgot about teeth. I fixed it. It's fine. 
I think this is cute. I don't know. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I will see you next week. Bye! I'm not scary. <laughs> <laughs>